Hello and welcome to Friday's weekly wrap up for this Friday, January 26th, 2024. Thanks for joining us once again. And if you're new to the channel, please do like and subscribe and share. It does help the channel. And please do join our Telegram where we post all articles of detail and granular information with regularity. For those who are already on the channel, well, you already know. Okay, so this week we had some interesting interviews. <clears throat> we met with Rod Steele on Monday, uh, our good friend Nick Benyamin on Tuesday, where I did a detailed presentation. You can go and watch that. It gives a good summary of where we are financially and geopolitically. And of course, dear friend Denise Boland, uh, Tuesday evening, which we just shared last night. <clears throat> and we are now, as you can see, embarking on a four-part series. Uh, we talked about the Vietnamese Dom, the Iraqi dinar, and there'll be new videos coming out in regards to the Zimbabwe bonds and 401ks uh, conversions into gold and silver and why that's a good bet for those of you who have yet to do so and are looking to investigate that. <clears throat> so here's the uh, highlights that I want to share with you for this week. Uh, Iraq's Prime Minister Sudani has told uh, President Putin privately that they're giving two months for the U.S. troops to get out. A lot to unpack there, so let's, let's discuss that for a minute. <clears throat> Firstly, we just increased the troop load by 1,500 troops about two weeks ago, which you saw in the article on Telegram. But it's not strictly American troops. <clears throat> there's British, there's Dutch, and Australian, and other factions, and they're supporting us as well. Now, this is no offense meant to anybody who's Russian or Russian descent, but you probably already know that Russians aren't known for their humor and charisma. They're a pretty serious, intense group of people who get things done. The reason I bring that up, I told you a while ago that Russia and China signed MOUs, Memorandums of Understandings, hard and fast documental agreements with uh, Iraqi and the Sudani, Sudani and Iraqis, excuse me. And so when they sign those agreements, they're going to hold Iraq to it. There's no pliability there. So what I'm saying is I'm not giving you a date or rate, but I'm telling you March is a very strong window to look for end of the first quarter for something to happen where our U.S. troops do a head fake summarily, as we refer to on Telegram, feign like they're going out to draw the bad guys out into the light and then go back in, take them out. <clears throat> and that's when you're going to see, we believe, the climax of what we're looking for. So you might want to write that down. That's, uh, I think, pretty decent information. King Charles III has uh, been admitted into the hospital for prostate surgery. So here we go again with the narrative of a medical illness. You see the triad going on, the U.S. deep state in Washington, the Vatican and Parliament. The Pope is coming, whoever that is, in and out of the news. We're going to be hearing from that situation again, I think, here shortly. So they're kind of alternating the news story, the mixing up the news cycles. But <clears throat> you're going to see medical illness as the narrative for King Charles III, for the Pope, and for the Biden. And I would be watching that anywhere between now and sometime late into February. Interestingly enough, for those of you who've watched the shows in the past, we've talked about copper being a great backstop to silver when silver is hard to take delivery. Well, uh, Jasara News, which we have shared on Telegram, has reported that copper is a powder keg getting ready to explode. And we've talked about that. We've done shows going back to 2022. You can investigate on your own with Denise Boland and uh, also talking about how XDC is back on the, the ISO 20022 crypto chart market in copper. So very interesting correlation there. Now, the Fed is allowing uh, emergency bank uh, loan programs and lending programs to expire March 11th. There we go again with March. 11th is the number, number 11 is number of agreements. So you can see things correlating quite nicely. <clears throat> Asia is bracing for Trump's comeback and major policy reversals. So they know the writing's on the wall. Japan, if you don't already know, has been suffering a lot of earthquakes this month, and they've also had a hemorrhaging in their bond market. Should also be watching the 10-year yield for those of you who watch such things. Greg Manorino, who's going to be a guest on our show February 5th, has been alluding to this for quite some time. So once again, he and I are in alignment on this and many other things. So Japan understands what's happening, and they're bracing for the exit rows pretty quickly. Bank closures increase as 189 imperative services will be done this year. And uh, we've talked about this week and many other weeks about the bank failures, uh, companies closing up. Just yesterday, Microsoft announced 1,900 layoffs through Activision and other related groups. <clears throat> so you can see it leaking out more and more as this false economy, the wheels start to come off. 
And some of you have been asking about some of the members of BRICS. So I threw this in there. A new member, Egypt, is working to deepen ties with BRICS. So they are officially in the BRICS and they're working to expand, which I would have to believe will help uh, Turkey, Syria, and other nations as well who are integrally involved. So there's more to come, but that's a good, I think, summation of where we are to date. Uh, if anything urgent breaks out over the weekend, I'll come back on and do a special report. Otherwise, I will see you for next week's wrap-up. Have a great and safe weekend, and just be prepared. Take care.